Thank you so much for joining us on the 65th edition of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa. My name is Nick Machuski. I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, we're the podcast that talks to the people, places, events, and music that make Ottawa the incredible city that it is, like always. And before we get to Keenan and Julie from Live, Work, Play, why don't we check this out? Hey, this is Yolande from Pony Girl. And this is Jeff. We released an album this past September called Show Me Your Fears that you can check out at ponygirl.ca. We'll be playing many of those songs as well as some brand new ones on Friday at the Black Sheep Inn with Fevers, a fantastic band also based in Ottawa. Tickets are 10 bucks, and the door opens at 8.30. There'll be a bus leaving from the Museum of Nature heading to the show in Wakefield. It leaves at 8 o'clock sharp and it'll drop you back off after the show. And it's a party bus, so bring your own... Uh, party! Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Don't leave now. So thank you so much, Pony Girl. That was Show Me Your Fears. They're, of course, playing with Fevers in Wakefield. If you've never been out to the Black Sheep Inn, there's a free shuttle from the Museum of Nature. Can't go wrong. Only 10 bucks. Great time out there. Springs in the air. Uh, okay. Tons of good shows out there, right? Eh? Tons of good shows. And speaking about spring in the air, we're here with Keenan Weller and Julie Kingstone from Live, Work, Play. Thank you so much for having us here today. Hey, thanks. thanks. Great to be nice here. Yeah, it's a nice little office, nice corner spot you got here. Not bad. Watching the snowfall. Uh, it's the last of the snow. starts again. Yeah. It's the last rain. of the snowfall. It's turning to rain. I can yeah. Feel yeah. <laughs> and uh, so before we get into Live, Work, Play, all about the incredible stuff that you do, we would like to first uh, congratulate you on the Community Builder Award for Live, Work, Play. Uh, so that just went on recently. Yeah, add it to the wall of inspiration. The award was given last year, and then they bring all the award winners together at City Hall and put the names up on the wall of inspiration in Gene Pickett Hall. And it's great oh, to meet good. all kinds of like-minded people that do such great uh, stuff in the community. And I know Andrew and I want to, uh, that's our long-term plan, to hopefully do better things in our community. What so, were a couple of the other memorable names that were up there with you? Well, I think... Uh, uh, well, Diane Morrison, who yeah. was the former executive director of the uh, Mission. Mission. And she's now retired, but she was uh, she kind of was the one person uh, last year that was um, the individual the community individual builder community of builder oh, cool. year of the award. So she she shared some of her experiences and success stories and challenges and very inspirational from what you know when she got involved as a volunteer with that organization and how being a woman especially in that organization and how she was able to help that organization move with the end goal of ending homelessness not increasing the shelter system but I was very, yeah, yeah yeah that impressed me a lot just to come right out and say and by the way our you know our goal isn't to make more spaces in the shelter it's to no, stop having shelter yes yeah I'm like, which is yes. a much better goal yeah Absolutely. And Did you guys have to uh, give an acceptance speech or anything? Or That was uh, last June. That was quite, yeah. quite something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a big event, and uh, we had one of our uh, amazing... We were introduced by one of our commu amazing community partners, uh, Vaughn McKinney, at the, the Parliament Cleaning Group, and they asked him to do a two-minute introduction. Okay. Um, and he was very enthused about everything, and it was about ten minutes. And we were quite a, we were quite alarmed personally, and then everyone just erupted. They loved everything he said, 
everyone said that was like the highlight of the event was what everything that Vaughn said, and we were like, oh, okay. ah, that's great, <laughs> wonderful. They didn't start rolling the music out like in the office no. to speed it up. <laughs> I was sweating, right? I'm like, oh no. my god, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Uh, and our oh, and our good. hours that we shared was really more um, to get people to reflect and think. So it was more of an interactive. So oh, we made it, we made it very interactive for the audience. Got them to stand up and answer some questions and put their hands up and. So I think that was, I've heard that that was also memorable. for Trying people. to focus people on what we all have in common, because there's a lot of emphasis on what's different, kind of in the charity sector, something we're trying to change. Yeah. Let's not focus on difference, let's focus on what we share, and it's a fact. A lot of people are excluded. And and what did you say for sharing in the uh, the charitable sector? What did we say for sharing? Yeah, that we, that we could focus on. Oh, I think just that... Um, you know, don't focus, for us anyways, that, you know, uh, people with intellectual disabilities, um, don't focus on their differences and that we're trying to fix them or that they are in need of a hand out. Uh, just that there's a lot of things we do where they're excluded and we just need to include them. So there's a lot yeah. of places where they live and places where they spend their time that are different from us, and that's not really the solution. We've invested a lot in um, housing and vocational things to keep people busy, but really they just want an apartment and a job like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's kind yeah. of what we're all about. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we're creeping up on about 20 years, I believe, for Live, Work, Play. What did you both do before? I guess, Julie, we'll start with you. Are you born and raised in Ottawa? Or? I'm born and raised in Ottawa, and uh, as a teenager, I had um, done some work with Christy Lake at the time, Christy Lake Boys Wonderful. Camp. Okay. Which is now known as Christy Lake Camp, and so from that experience, I really wanted to become, you know, a, so I, in the helping profession, a teacher or... Uh, so I pursued that and realized that um, more of a, I was more interested in um, being outside of the education system. So I okay. was actually working as a recreational therapist for uh, uh, what's now known as part of the Briere Center. Yeah. Um, yeah, working in the palliative care unit, and I was also doing some work in mental health with uh, with uh, at the time a newly formed organization called YouthNet, where we were going around doing mental health promotion or with high school students doing focus groups on mental health and trying to help people sort out you know if they who they could turn to for support if they needed help, which is something now good. twenty years later that they're they're also celebrating Finally. their twentieth anniversary. Yeah, oh, that's so good. that's where I sort of started, and then kind of met Keenan and. He was working. Things in. went off the rails from there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're, yourself, Keenan, you from Ottawa originally too, or? I've been here. I was uh, born in the U.S. when my dad was studying there, but I'm, I'm Canadian for uh, we're both in the U.S. of my life. Uh, well, he was uh, studying. In, uh, we were living in Evanston, uh, Illinois, at the time because he was at uh, Northwestern. 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 Yeah. Oh, right, cool. Exactly. So, but they're uh, northern Ontario folks, so come from solid stock. <laughs> and, uh, but I've been out about my whole life, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I fell uh, pretty ass backwards into this field, and ended up in uh, working in the school system a little bit. Also, like Julie, I hadn't met her yet, but also found out that I did not like working in the school system. A little too, a little too rigid for me. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, as a student teacher. I did go through teachers college. I think I spent more time in the vice principal's office getting in trouble than my students. <laughs> <laughs> she was always saying, your classroom's too loud! So, yeah, uh, it wasn't for me. And uh, I was actually working in the high-tech sector for uh, a startup company called Ingenia Communications and, uh, for about two years and a national uh, educational project. And uh, working on with Julie on... Uh, this this uh, charity project on the side, which was how really did you meet and discuss this for the first yeah. time? Oh man, just uh, mutual friends and uh, her interest, her background in youth, and there was a bit of crossover uh, with some of the influences in our lives. Well, Keenan was uh, met some students when he was uh, working in a classroom and in a special needs classroom and yeah. a lot of those families are looking for help outside of the school day so on the evenings and weekends and Keenan had been connected with some of those families and then we were connected through a mutual friend and Keenan decided to invite me along just you know meet, I needed the, help. meet some of the people he was <laughs> supporting <really> and <laughs> just through that we realized these guys at the time they were mostly young men but yeah. uh, they were still in high school and they were spending most of their time one on one with adults in all areas of their life and how they were really seemed to be interested in craving meeting other people their own age yeah. uh, and going out and doing regular things that you know their brothers and sisters or their, their 
you know, their, their peers at school were doing. So we said, oh, well, why don't we start inviting some other, you know, them together and maybe some other people who are also providing support, so other workers and their, their clients together so they could at least meet people their own age. Yeah. So that's kind of that's how it all, all sure. started, like going whatever, like instead of every Saturday keen would get together one-on-one -on -one with somebody to go tobogganing, we yeah. would just sort of get a group to get together and... And then families, just through that process, getting to know families and, and how scared they were and how worried they were about looking up, looking ahead to high school graduation and what was going to happen to their son yeah. and daughter after high school. You know, they're being, you know, in terms of funded services from the government, there's a lot of waiting lists. And yeah. even at the end of the waiting list, they weren't, their kids or them weren't that excited about what the options were. So they knew their kids weren't going to college or university. So they were just like, there got to be something else. And, and when we sort and of... the school system wasn't helping, like, well, the wasn't doing the greatest system, job. It doesn't give them good information about... What's uh, after? What's actually available after. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, an example is, and this, this still goes on... Um, they do organize co-op placements, but, you know, they're pretty brief, and generally, it's so, employers are just there to, they want the person to have a good time, but sometimes parents, they get some feedback through the co-op process that, oh yeah, they, they were great on the job, and, and, you know, they'll graduate, and they'll probably get hired, and it, it just isn't the case. Yeah. So, yeah. co-ops are not, they're not job trials, and uh, people are nice when you do a co-op, they give you a gift, and they tell you you were great, uh, but that's not the same as a job offer, so I think... Yeah, maybe expectations are a little high, and then when when things aren't available, uh, they start to realize, wow, we need a bit better plan of uh, what's going to be next. So, so you wanted to impl you wanted to implement results, not just the uh, the plan the like plan. the school. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. To be honest, I think when we started, I, I certainly had the assumption that it seems like these families are, just aren't aware of what must be available. And then we started to investigate, so it's called the Developmental Services System. Yeah. We started to investigate that, and we realized, oh, I see what they're saying. So There's actually nothing available, really. <laughs> not only is there not too much available, but the things that, if you do kind of get through all the lineups and the hoops, um, what's there is not necessarily what they want. So most of them, were like, they want their kids to have a life like their other siblings or other people in the community, and this was all very systemic. And so they didn't necessarily want the, the prize at the end was not even what they wanted. Yeah, they just wanted yeah. their, they, and the youth themselves, like the, at the time, yeah. they want they just wanted to have a job and wanted to be able to participate in activities in the community. Like, what do I do on a Friday night? Well, they wanted, you know, no, yeah. no real, no difference yeah. there. They want a girlfriend and a boyfriend. So yeah. what's, what's yeah. out there is you can go to an activity center yeah. and sit around and do art or, which isn't necessarily, you know, the activities that aren't necessarily bad. <laughs> if you like art, but yeah. there are a lot of people doing activities that they don't even necessarily but they don't want like. to do. So it's, they're, it's on the schedule. Today we do art, today we yeah, do Yeah, it's like we're yeah. just going to keep you busy. Right. Yeah. So, so ironically, we ended up doing for a while. We ended up also offering those kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, though, it was a little different. It was. But, but I guess but it was you were so learning familiar. Too. You're, we were you're, learning. You were learning right. from yeah. them, and you're, yes. you're you're establishing uh, where you're going to go with it. So yeah. exactly. you're finding what went wrong, what went wrong last week. Yeah. So always evolving. That's Whereas right. yes. in a school or a rigid school system, you can't no, really yeah, evolve with that. Very challenging, even yeah. if you want to. Yeah. So then you you started integrating them in more into the community. I guess that's a big uh, concept. Yeah, we started level. looking at, instead of looking at us creating solutions, so we had said, oh, well, you want a job? Okay, we'll create some jobs. So we created a woodworking uh, sign shop yeah. where we sold signs, and we created a thrift store. We, we started up a thrift store, and we sold... We collected people's garbage and sold it to people. And it's we, hard to start up. It is. Oh, Let alone yeah. fifty of them exactly. at a time. Right. Correct. So we Correct. and then are solving like social problems. Well, we'll be the solution. We'll introduce you to some people, and we'll um, you know we'll take you out and support you to go and do things in the community, which is all a great starting point. But I think what we've learned is the key question is not what how not for us to um, come up with the solutions but to help people find what's already out in the community and help mm -hmm. people get connected in the community into things that they want to do so it's very individualized and everybody's really different so not everybody wants to go to a 67s game on a Friday night yeah, yeah. right so we have really definitely like you said we've learned we've tried a lot of different things and where we are today is helping people find their own solutions of what's already in the community and how to help them develop people around them in those places where they don't just go and they're there but pe that they have relationships with people at the Y or at their local gym or in a lo local soccer league where they can really feel like they're where they are contributing and a valued member of those community sub communities that's awesome yeah, yeah it's what, so what were some of the early uh, uh, companies that adopted your thoughts because it's, this was something new that you brought forth 
So, so I have, of course, in a government town, a lot of people are going to be, that's different, you know, yeah. I, I don't know about <laughs> that, how is this, and then you're going to get also other people that are, uh, how does this benefit me, you know, only thinking about them, themselves, so you have a, such a hard job, uh, well, not not too hard. Well, not <laughs> yeah. hard. it depends on the day. It depends yeah. on the day. On I don't want to. Yeah. I, I can't generalize that. Yeah. But uh, who were some of the early adopters in that kind of sense? Yeah, I think the interesting question about that is if if you talk to other people in this field and you say, well, why aren't you doing something similar as this? You'll get a lot of answers such as, well, people in the community won't be receptive to this. And so we kind of challenged ourselves that way, and maybe we should go and ask before we decide. Yeah. yeah. Um, or in some cases, they walk through the door. Like um, back in the day, they were called uh, MBNA, uh, Bank of Canada, which is now part of TD Bank. Yes. Yeah. They did literally um, come to us. They saw some of what we were doing, and uh, we got involved with them. That was our first uh, major employer. And so there are uh, seven people that connected through Live Work Play that have had now quite long careers wow. um, at TD That's Bank. That's awesome. They're out at the Gloucester, uh, the Gloucester office towers, yep. and. Uh, in uh, you know, in a variety of departments, like maybe not what people might typically uh, think of, but everything from the legal department uh, to the cafeteria and in between. So that was one of our really cool, motivating, exciting first experiences, and and just you know, full kudos to the people at the bank who picked a small, um, barely established agency and just liked what we were trying to do and and. Uh, came through the door. So. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, we're halfway through the show, so we're going to take a quick break. What? So it's so close. <laughs> so we'll be right back talking about more of the, the things going on right now uh, with Live, Work, Play. But we're going to first listen to a song from Pony Girl. This is Better Days, and we'll be right back with Keenan and Julie. So that was Better Days from Pony Girl. Thank you once again. And so we'll talk about some recent successes of Live, Work, Play. I know there was a great story about the OSSC that you are just telling about, uh, us about. Sure. I mean, so it's uh, jobs are really important, but uh, the rest of life is important too. So we have Well, that's the slogan, Live, Work, Play. There that's a go. good point. Yes. So we help people with where they live. We help people with work. And we also help them with the rest of their lives. And so... We have people interested in uh, sports, for example, and we had a young guy that uh, was really interested in, in some uh, fun but competitive soccer, and he tried some of the, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's leagues exclusively for people with intellectual disabilities, and he tried that sort of thing, and it wasn't really working for him, and uh, we thought, well, let's check out uh, Ottawa Sports and uh, see what's available, and did some background, and he ended up on a team, and we wanted to see how it would go. And basically, they discovered uh, not only is Chris a really fun guy, but he can, I don't know the right soccer terminology because I'm more of a football guy, but if yeah. there's a long kicker in soccer, if there's such a thing, like, you know, after the ball goes out and then you have to kick it really far. There you go. Yeah. Uh, he can just drive it the length of the field. So they discovered this skill, assigned him this, basically that was became one of his specialties. Uh, and one of our favorite stories was as the, the league was winding up for this year and... Uh, um, a number of people went down to watch because it was the last game, and towards the end of the game, he got hit directly flush in the face from about three feet away. Oh. Absolute blast, like right in the nose, gushing with blood, goes down, pops back up and resumes play. Better. And like everyone oh, just goes bananas. Yeah. They all know Chris, and they know his personality. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, this, this feeds into the, uh, the pub time after the game, which is, yeah. I was just saying earlier during the break that, you know, trying to figure out when things are going right with the work that we do. Like, how do you measure 
you're trying to have someone included in a soccer team. How do you figure this out? Well, yeah. it basically, you get invited for beers after or not. Do people miss you if you're not there? Mm-hmm. Do they make sure you have a ride home because it's a late night? Well, that's it. He's a part of the team, right? So. Yeah, totally. totally. 100%. 100%. And totally. in the soccer world, if he gets hit in the face and he's not crawling and lying on the ground like everyone else, good for him. I think that's why the fans went nuts. Yeah. They're just like, finally! Yeah, yeah. somebody that's actually hurting, not lying yeah, on the ground, not, waiting not for pretending. a red flag or not something. So those are the kind of things we... Uh, that's the stuff we celebrate around here. So, well, that's good. and that's yeah. a great one. And what about the story of Dow, Dow Honda as well? That was a very good one. Yeah, I think Julie could chime in. But uh, you know, this was a, an employer that uh, came forward and really wanted to work with us, and it just took a while. We couldn't find the right fit. And well, one of the stumbling blocks was um, they were really excited to have people do car detailing. So in the summer, they have a real need in the business to have people wash the used cars oh, inside bet. and out. Mm-hmm. But the stumbling block was. Most people we support don't have driver's licenses, so how are they going to figure out? So most most of our hiring practices up until now was basically they, that person needed to have a driver's license. Mm-hmm. But the problem they were having was that they had so much turnover in that, that position that they were spending so much time trying to find the right person, and then that person would be there for two weeks, and then they would leave. So they figured out, you know what? Forget about the driver's license. We'll make our staff will bring in the car to the bay, and then we'll try it out. And you know what? It's worked beautifully. And it's been uh, been a constant. And then they also figured out that's great for seasonal work. So we only need that for four or five months of the year. Yeah. What else can someone do during the rest of the year? There must. So they actually uh, Dow Honda looked into um, their uh, inventory department, their parts department, and they always every year when they do the reconciliation of parts and money, how much money that's worth in terms of keeping track of the parts you have. They, they saw a bit of a gap, so they hired somebody part-time to count inventory. So what does our computer say, and what do we actually have in the drawer? That's good. And after a year of a person being in the position, they realized they did the reconciliation this year, and for the first time, the difference is about a $500 gap, whereas years past, it was like tens of thousands of dollars of gap of wow. inventory they said they had and or they, they didn't have. Oh, wow. So the part of, I mean having that person there it's a really menial menial type job don't, don't, their staff don't like to count nuts and bolts and, yeah. and parts but or their staff used to be taking a lot of nuts and bolts well maybe but, <laughs> now uh, or not it's, yeah, so it's, so it's, evidence yeah. seems to indicate it was more a process <laughs> issue yeah. but it, it, it's been so successful that and there's a, not just it's not just a nice thing to do but it's been a business case that they've actually gone out to two other dealers that are Wonderful. owned by the same Perfect. owner and sold it to them saying you know what this could really help you so can Canada Honda and Star Motors have also now developed positions in each of their dealerships so that have hired a, a person each. So well, and all these success stories have to help you in that case too, right? I mean, you can bring awesome. these numbers and figures to other companies now exactly. and say, look how well this is working out for everybody else. Like, exactly. Why don't you jump on board, right? Yeah. Yep. And a major thing is they get paid the same rate as... Yep. Minimum which, minimum that was going to be another one of my questions too. Right. They get paid the minimum wage. Minimum wage or, or better. Or better. Yeah. Or better. But I was just reading it and I was floored when I... Oh, yeah. I did not know about the sheltered workshops, right. why it took so long to, to change the ruling for sub minimum wage. Yep. I... And that's something that it sounds like the government really wanted to keep quiet because if that was it more in the, the news and the media, <laughs> uh, a, a woman just recently won a case and she got back, she was getting paid a dollar twenty five yes. an hour yeah. for 10 years. Yes. So they, a lot of companies thought they'd be able to take advantage of intellectually dis, uh, yep. disabled people. And it's not just companies. No. Not just companies. Yeah. Oh. It's complicated, right? So it goes back a long, long time and it, this all really grew up in the 1970s when a lot of the people that we're supporting now, they would have been living in an institution like Rito Regional. And at the, in the 70s, it was seen as an advancement if you could bring people into the community and organize some kind of a work-like setting and give them a couple of bucks. Yeah. The problem is, almost 50 years later, the model is still continuing in various communities throughout Ontario and Canada and North America, uh, including in Ottawa. And it's only come to light in this particular human rights tribunal ruling because there was non-disabled people working alongside people with disabilities getting paid, one group getting paid minimum wage, wow. the other group getting paid $1.25. Yeah. But there are lots of people in these types of situations still, uh, and it's not resolved completely. So this is a, probably the edge of the wedge where people like yourself have become aware and you're saying this is unacceptable, and yeah, that's totally unacceptable. Yeah. Totally unacceptable, and especially it's, it's, they're doing the same work. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, let's kick it back to equal rights. You know, <laughs> hey, if you're doing the, the same. The challenge job. will be that the challenge will be that 
if we don't support those individuals to be successful in something else, uh, then what's to happen to them? And that will be kind of the, the stumbling block that's raised or uh, the objection that's raised. So it is true. There's all this investment in, in separating people. We have to change that invest in including them, which means, example, the type of work we do, supporting people to meet employers who respect and value their talents and then can be a win-win situation. Yeah. And, but you just proved it with the Dow Honda story that yeah. this is possible. So when you hear people go with, come back with that excuse to you, right. you're, you just are chock full and you're like, wow, that is ridiculous old-time thinking. Yeah. Let's, let's think progressively. Now be careful, Nick, because everyone will drop off their kids at Live Work Play and say, fine, you deal with it. So <laughs> I just want to be clear, we're a small operation. And our, yeah. to be clear on our values, we think every agency in this system should be doing this differently. Yes. Yep. So there, we do have many allies, but there's a lot of people that are reluctant to change from the, an older model, which I said is really 40 years old. So, and how do you get your source of income to start uh, to provide this great help? Uh, in terms of employment, we've sort of. Uh, pieced things together um, from we have some support through United Way Ottawa and some support through fee-for-service arrangements with families um, and we have some support just for a year from the Ontario Trillium Foundation which was helping us to build our capacity and develop further relationships with new employment partners um, but it's definitely our biggest challenge in all of the supports and services that we provide is providing employment supports we don't really have any core renewable annualized funding so it's always sort of a game every year of wow. who can we tap into next and that's why we were excited to hear about yeah. the funding announcement with the ready we're willing ready and willing and able uh, in the federal bu in the federal budget a few weeks ago uh, hoping to tap into some of those resources so we can be a little more stable um, because we are finding more and more as you said as employers find out that this is a win-win situation we're having employers come to us on their own without us actually knocking on their door saying great I'm ready but if we if we can't commit to employers and to people we're supporting over the long term or even the short term yeah. you know it, 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 it's, irresponsible. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's challenging so yeah so the funding piece for employment is is one of the more challenging parts of our work at this point approximately how many uh, employers are you working with right now we are working with about 40 oh, wow. 40 to 45 employers so That's we fantastic. have yeah so there's yeah Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we have a list, uh, a pool of people currently looking for work at about 25 or 30 people wow. actively searching for work. Well, that's Do good. you meet up with other people in your similar situation across the country in different cities to hear about how they're doing? Um, yeah. and, and do they like your story? What, how are we on par with other cities? Yeah, yeah. we had a lot of conversations. Uh, actually, we just, we just came back from a trip in, uh, to visit in Atacokan and Thunder Bay, which of course is where you want to go in winter. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but you know those are two Saturday agencies. Me Saturday Mexico, yeah, yeah, Mexico. Right. Thick, thick, but I mean, those are two two uh, agencies that invited us to have this exact conversation because they're looking at what they do and um, how to make these shifts. So part of it is that it's not necessarily what what people are funded to do. So how creative can you be with the funds that you have and the funds that are providing mm -hmm, them? Mm -hmm. um, and also, how much are you willing to do even if you're not supported to do it? So I think we're all kind of walking that line. But I think the greatest, what an awful shame for taxpayers, agencies, and people with intellectual disabilities. If employers are literally walking through the door of agencies saying, I want to hire somebody, can you help me? And we have to go... Well, no, because all of our infrastructure is invested in these other things that don't really work very well. But we've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is not a good message. This is not no. next. This is not next generation nonprofit service delivery. You know, so we have a lot to work on, and uh, we're talking, yeah, with the willing and seeing what we can do. Do we do? Uh, you guys have any upcoming like charity events or uh, things like that that uh, people? April third. Kind of Recipe for success. April third. Recipe for success. Yeah, it's our fifteenth. I think it's our 15th I think so. auction. We're going to promote it as our 15th. And it's <laughs> a, a combination of, a, of about 100 to 120 silent auction packages, anything from out to dinner, out to the movies, uh, oh, wow. gym memberships. Uh, there's some like little getaways, and then we also have about 20 to 25 live auction items, which include a trip for two anywhere WestJet flies, and uh, four nights in Hawaii, and we have a Via Rail for four to Quebec City, and we have a bed and breakfast package at Shadow Montebello. Ooh, um, nice. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, and some some concert tickets to the uh, some upcoming shows, 
to be announced uh, yeah. there you go. this summer. So yeah, we usually have a bit of any, everything for anybody. So it's a fun time. It's we very have... fun. It's not one of those auctions where you can't understand like what the auction is. <laughs> it's very <laughs> down to earth. It's Derek Fage from Rogers TV and uh, Sandy, Sandy Sharkey from Boom. And they are uh, an excellent uh, combination yeah. because between the two of them, they often are able to keep track of what the bid is, but not always. <laughs> so, and and where's this piece held, sir? St. Anthony's Banquet Hall. Preston okay. and the, uh, the soccer club, basically. The yep. soccer club, but they've redone the, I must say, uh, it's a non-profit organization, and they've oh, yeah. redone the banquet hall, and it's looking really nice. Is that That's where they great. have the boxing matches as well, in that banquet hall? That, I don't know. <laughs> that could be some underground. I know they've had a lot of things there. <laughs> yeah. I went to a punk show there when I was yeah. in high school. Yeah, it's I mean. a multi-use yeah. facility. So get there. Is there still tickets available? There is tickets available. Uh, recipe for success. That's it. I'll get you there. Perfect. Can you also bid online for some of the uh, for some of the items, perhaps, or do you have to be at the physical? Uh... We have not gone there yet. Okay. Uh, so you will need to be there in person, or you know, if you're really, we do publish the uh, full list of items. And if you are really interested, you just give Keenan your credit card, and then there he takes care of it. So <laughs> I've done that in the past. It works well, that's good well. to know. Yeah. And you're also speaking at the International Summit on Accessibility. You're doing. An eight minute TED talk, so that's going to be very interesting as well. Enjoy. Very pumped for that. I'm not known for uh, summarizing things, so I'm, I'm, I'm working really hard on that. I'm trying to get it down to three sentences. Uh, and I saw pictures on the face your Facebook page, facebook.com slash live work play fans. Fans, and you went to on a trip to Turks and Caicos. That looked like an incredible time, something that. People can look forward to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're that's just part, actually in the that's process. A, that's part of the fun. That's part of the play part. part. We're just in play. the process of uh, yeah connecting with our members about trips for 2015. Although there is a small group uh, heading on a Travac tours to Chicago in May, oh, cool. uh, so they're going to join a, a bus tour uh, with any, other people from Ottawa who are interested in going to Chicago, and that's coming up. And uh, yeah, next year it looks like. More Turks and Caicos, and Probably. potentially some other bus trips as well. Oh, was it a fun. great success? Great, it looked. Like yeah, it I mean, we supported. I think it was twenty-seven individuals associated with the work play uh, to go to the club med in Turks and Caicos. And again, how do you know if this is worthwhile and success? Uh, usually, best measured by how many other guests at, from the resort come to see you off uh, when the bus is leaving mm-hmm. and they're weeping. That's always a good sign. Uh, and they're they saying, their lives. Yeah. Yep. And they're saying, when, if you guys come back next year, let us know the dates because we'll come at the same time. And they don't oh, only awesome. they don't only say it; they do it. They do so. it. They actually do it. It happened this year. Yeah. Uh, people that had it was yeah. years ago, we over three years, years ago, ago, that had uh, been there at the same time, they aligned their vacation with when we were going to be there. So, wow, that's great. That's very cool. Yeah, people keep very in touch cool. over Facebook or between the, over the years. The and... Club Med staff tend to cry the most because uh, oh, our group loves, they go to all the activities. <laughs> yeah. So it, you, the guy that, it's called land sports, which is a nice way of saying like billiards and ping pong. Soccer. It's, yeah. not, Soccer. Soccer. it's not necessarily what Club Med guests want to do. So it can be a very lonely task. I think they tend to punish staff by sending them into the land sports job. Um, so this guy had like the time, was, he literally said, I had, this is a time of my life. That's Every, great. All week, he sent us a shirt from where he used to work in Mexico. It's out in the lobby because he has well, such sure. a great whenever time. You go, whenever I, like, I went to an all-inclusive in, uh, in October, and it's the same thing. I mean, you know, you might get a couple of volunteers exactly. to do some things here and there. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you can tell that the people working uh, would really appreciate if you oh, know, yeah. 20 or 30 people would want to do something instead of two. He was well, like, Madre de Dios, a whole soccer team. Like, two whole <laughs> soccer teams. Like, this, this has never happened. Like, but, and, but the cool thing about Club Med, the first time we went, was that it wasn't just the Club Med staff. It was the people that are generally... Um, that come to club meds in general, or this one in particular, it's people who want to meet other people. Yeah. So you walk, I walk by the soccer field and I see a couple of people that we're there to support, but none of us are there. Like they're just mixing in with all the other guests and guests know their names or encouraging yeah. them, cheering That's them on. Great. You know, they're in the goalie or they're passing the ball or so it's, it's a whole, it's a, the whole package. It's not yeah. just the staff. And they connect on guests. Facebook. And now like they're on our yeah. Facebook page and commenting on the pictures. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, you're you're looking to go for the Amazing Race Canada, I heard? Well, <laughs> we have tried very hard, especially in the first season, and, and we actually had gotten through one of the stages of the application uh, process. But if you watch the show, uh, you they don't take a lot of 40-something folks. So you're kind of, they're probably going to you know take two for the country in our age range, and you have to be... You know, it's really stand out. So, well, uh, you have a great message, and they also hopefully would take uh, the people with great message yeah. and, and yeah. promote that. Was that, the idea. that I think that that's the idea. idea. So. We tried. We 
tried. Yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're, we're, either way, we're happy. We're running our own Amazing Race here. So there you we're, go. We're, yeah, we're happy. Awesome. When, however, the we're first sick. season, they um, CBC invited us to talk about it, and they brought us on with two young ladies that were skating on the canal in bikinis. And I thought, yeah, this is why we don't make it. <laughs> 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 I just we could do that. Well, you were in your underwear. That would be really memorable. You got in a bikini. Thing, I think you might get <laughs> yes. on the show. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Who's driving? Next year. Who's driving? You, you, you can do it for sure. Well, thank you so much for having yeah, us here. Thanks a lot, guys. It's uh, great to learn about Live Work Play. So, liveworkplay.ca. Uh, and are you looking for volunteers? Always, as well? always, always looking volunteers. for volunteers. Huge always. part of what we do. We we have twelve staff, and we should have mentioned team of twelve, but we have uh, about one hundred and fifty volunteers, which is what really makes this oh, wow. a success. Yeah, that's wonderful. Great. So, look at that, and I will definitely be helping out in the future. It's very nice good to hear. Thank you. In November, it was great. <laughs> All right, and next week we have the lads from Bottega and Castro, so doing great, mm. things, great things in the, the city <laughs> I as hear well. they're opening up a new store. Yeah. The, the new one in the Preston yeah. area. Right so on. that's going to be great. That's mm-hmm. going to. They have a lot of interesting news with that one. Yep. So uh, events, any events that you're looking to uh, promote this weekend that you know about? Events that I know about? Look, get your Red Blacks tickets. That's the thing. Yeah, there you're you a big go. Red Football's flag. coming. They just released. People have been asking if I don't want to buy season tickets. They just came out with the, uh, like, Individual? you can get some game day packages okay. and things. So, yes, huge Red Blacks fan. I got a Facebook page there, too. So. Sweet. Are you the runner of the Facebook page for the yes, Red Blacks? Yes, absolutely. It's a fan page. He's a super uh, fan. So Red Black fan? <laughs> it, it has over a thousand fans, but if you just search uh, yeah, Ottawa Red Blacks fans, it should come That's right you. Up. That's me. Okay. <laughs> right but don't on. tell anybody. We also got NCAA, <laughs> uh, NCAA basketball started late. today. Are you from the States? Do you watch any of the uh, March Madness yes, tournaments sometimes. at all? How many, but there's sometimes. many, many Canadians in March Madness. There, there is. is. Uh, many, many, many. Awesome. Awesome. And we're hoping some of them get to uh, near the finals anyway. I have yeah. Florida winning. How about, how about you? You have Arizona. I got Arizona winning. No, I also have Florida. Yeah, Florida. Yeah, too strong, but they didn't play a lot of quality teams this year. So it, yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a mystery. Yeah. So it's a mystery, one mm-hmm. of those kind of things. But Florida State won in football this year, and they did, had the same thing. So you got to look at that kind of stuff, right? And how, and how did our Ottawa teams fare off against some of the uh, the NCAA uh, teams? Well, yeah, Wisconsin and Syracuse are in, and, mm-hmm. and Carlton, Carlton beat. Carlton beat Syracuse. Carlton beat Wisconsin, Wisconsin, but it went to overtime against Syracuse. Ah. And that was when Tyler oh, Ennis right. made his, That's right. when Tyler Ennis uh, became the starter. So right. Well, that's it. It'll Syracuse is pretty now. strong. So they're they're going to be strong, but uh, they can be beat. They can be beat. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, Duke, I'm a Duke fan, so I'm going for Duke. And they'll so they they definitely run. can be beat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're going on. So events this weekend. Uh, Friday, I will be volunteering at the Arthritis Society presents Taste at the Sala San Marco. Mm. So that'll be a lot of fun. Mm. Friday it starts at six thirty. There's still tickets available, sixty dollars. There are live and silent, silent auctions. There's desserts. Bose will be there. Who does uh, among others? So that'll be a lot of fun. Sweet. Mm. Very good. Uh, there's also a uh, fundraiser for an art show for Studio Cafe Gallery and, and Workshop that's going to be open up in Hintonburg. So another art. Uh, the art scene in Ottawa mm-hmm. just it's exploding. Exploding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. there seems to be art shows all over yeah. the place. All over. The news last night of what they're doing. The new funding the, for the oh, Ottawa Art Gallery. Amazing. And I was at the Colin Waits exhibit last night at oh, cool. the Art Gallery. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, on that TV. Yeah. It is so great. The mm-hmm. confectionaries. I love mm-hmm. capturing uh, stuff like that promotes stories. So that's the art mm-hmm. that I like. Mm-hmm. When you can bring anybody into your house or re- that are going to yeah. see the art and go, I remember passing by that store and yeah. remember things. Yeah. That's, that's art to me, like not mm-hmm. just uh, seeing butter, like butterflies and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, uh, but everybody's that's a whole other story. the butterfly artists are going to be all over. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're done. That's, yeah. A, that's a powerful <laughs> lobby. You're, <laughs> you're in trouble. Oh, no, this show's yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> On Friday, we got the dance marathon at Shopify Liquor Store and Green Room for Chio. So a lot of uh, yeah, that's electronic sounds. music at those lovely places. Two p.m. to ten p.m. Two p.m. to Dance that's a up. lot of dancing. Mm. Uh, it's the the car shows going on this weekend. So if you like cars, yeah. Uh, but if you don't like cars and you want to get to Home and Garden, go to the show, Home and yeah, Garden show. There you go. Yeah. So Home people say there's nothing going on in Ottawa. No, they don't anymore. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, there's no liars. time for all this. There's no time. Yeah. For yeah. Weekend. It's, it's, every weekend. Every weekend's the same. That's why I can never get out of Ottawa. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my mom hates it. <laughs> of course, there's many great concerts. Sean Cullen, the comedian, is here at the Little Theater Saturday mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Uh, March Madness. What else you got? March Madness. That's it. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm heading there to town for a wedding, actually. So. Oh, it's it's got to be some tennis, soon. Yeah. There is tennis. Which tennis yeah. tournament is there going is, on? They're uh, watching Miami, right? So- Sony Open in Sony Miami. Open. Sony Open. And Eugenie Bouchard and Milos Raonic and pa- Vasek Pospis- Pospisil. Pospisil. They're all playing. Do the Pospisil. They're all playing. Yes. He's yeah. feeling better. Yeah. Good. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks again, guys. And we Cheers. got one yeah. last song. It's from Pony Girl. This one's Sleep Talk. Check them out on Friday. Get on that party bus. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Take everyone. care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Darkness at all. 